Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. It is Food for Thought Friday. So glad that you are with us. Hope you've had a great week. I want to encourage you with some things. Maybe God has spoke to me through reading my Bible, through my devotional time, uh, through a a YouTube video, podcast, radio programs that I listen to, maybe through a conversation that uh, I've had with somebody or uh, through social media. So, but I want to start off with today something kind of on a, a lighter note, humorous note. The uh, Bible in Proverbs says, A cheerful heart is good medicine to the soul. And uh, Lou Holtz, the former college football coach and ESPN football analyst, said, Don't tell your problems to people. 80% don't care. And the other 20% are glad that you have them. <laughs> oh, goodness. You got to laugh, friends. But in all honesty, God does care. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast your burdens on the Lord because he cares for you. And you may feel like nobody cares about you today, but I want to remind you that God does, that God loves. And he, he loves you, and he hurts when you hurt. And I'm so thankful that we have a heavenly father and because of coming down in the flesh and his one only son jesus christ uh, he understands our pain our heartache our disappointments and uh, just so thankful as a follower of jesus that we can go to god our heavenly father and that jesus is on his right side right next to him on the throne being our person our advocate or saying that's my son that's my daughter whom i love and that I, I need you to help them today and i'm so thankful that god's shown up in my life many 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 times and he wants to do that today for you friends i saw this quote uh i like this uh, i apologize but i can't i don't know who it was by but seven keys to life seven keys to life and i'm not saying this is an exhaustive list but i thought this was a pretty good list number one Simply put God first. Simply put God first. You know, sometimes we have to reprioritize what we're doing, and uh, one of the things we need to do is to, to put God first. Um, you know, one of the Ten Commandments, put no other gods before me, no false idols. And that doesn't necessarily mean like back then, a lot of times they were golden idols, a lot of times animals. But, you know, friends, we all have things we can put as idols. We can put our children. We can put our spouses uh, uh you know, we put our jobs, we put maybe uh, our cars, our homes, even our physical bodies sometimes. People just make idols of those. And I just want to remind you, friends, just to put God first, not to condemn anybody, but maybe just the Holy Spirit might want to convict you that, you know, there's an area of your life that you're kind of putting ahead of God if you're honest. A second key, it says, is to love one another. Oh, once again, Jesus said that he modeled that. What's the greatest commandment? To love one another as I've loved you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And that kind of goes back to the first one, putting God first. But, friends, the reason I think we can't love one another is because we don't know how much God loves us. And please be reminded of that today, how much God loves you. And the Bible says if God is for us, who can be against us? And I'm so thankful for that today that we know that. A third key to life, never hate. Oh, friends, our culture has gotten so much into just if you don't agree with somebody that you, you know, they hate you. And as followers of Jesus, we're called to a higher level, friends, and we need to not be like that. And we need not to hate. Uh, and so I just want to encourage you today, maybe if there's somebody in your heart you hate, the Bible says we're supposed to pray for those who persecute us. And boy, that's what takes our faith to another level, does it, when we do that? Another thing is to give generously. Seven keys to life, to give generously. Uh, it's one of the things that I've learned, friends. You cannot outgive God. I've shared this, but it's been quite a while since I have that when I went through the flood, bankruptcy, and divorce, and this was back in 2001, but the uh, only job I could get uh, was a part-time job. I was applying for full-time jobs. So it was a job that paid me $150 a week, kind of being an assistant uh, to a consultant with a, one project that they had working with the church. And so I was trying to get other jobs. And uh, I remember when it came to tithe that moment that normally I would tithe off my net income. But she just wrote me a check for $150, and uh, it was for about three months, the job. And I don't know, just something when I went to write that check, just felt like God said, you know, do you, you, you trust me with the net or the gross? 
And I started tithing out of my gross income and wrote that check for $15 instead of, I think it was like a, would have been like $13.75 back then. And, uh, you know, I've never looked back, just tithing off my gross income, giving off that. And it's just been a game changer. Doesn't mean I haven't had tough times. Doesn't mean that I've had to work multiple jobs <laughs> over the past uh, 20 plus years. Absolutely still doing that to this day. Okay. But you know what? God has always provided. I've never missed a meal. I've always had a roof over my head. I've had a car to drive. And I'm just so, so thankful, friends. And I just want to remind you, you can't outgive God. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive. As the old saying goes, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. And I want to encourage you to put to, just put your finances in God's hands first. And if you have a church home, to give there first and foremost, to tithe, and then to give to other ministries that bless you like hope is here. As we're looking at seven keys to life here on Food for Thought Friday. Number one, put God first. Two, love one another. Three, never hate. Four, to give generously. And number five, to live simple to live simple. Uh, my friend Ann, uh, she's got this, uh, got the word simplify. Uh, it was up in her kitchen. I remember seeing that a few years ago. And I've never forgot that because maybe other people had, but I had just never seen it in anybody's house. And I just thought, you know what, uh, man, uh, that's a good word for me. And as I'm saying it today, I feel a little hypocritical in that because sometimes I, my life's not simple. I make it too complicated, too many things going on. And yet, uh, I have tried to uh, not let material things kind of keep me uh, tied up and trying to live simply, stay out of debt. And uh, it just it does make a difference, friends. It truly does. And maybe today you need to know that just to live simple and know that God wants to help you. Number six, forgive quickly. Oh, my goodness, friends. Uh, I've been guilty of that where I've not forgiven somebody and that bitterness root gets starts to take up home in my heart and my mind and uh, uh i just always am so often reminded jesus said forgive so that you may be forgiven i want to ask you today who is it that you need to forgive i'm sure there's a person that came to mind immediately and to be honest with you it might be yourself it might be yourself that you need to forgive I share this every few months and feel like I'm supposed to share it again today. The number one thing that I have learned doing ministry now for over 20 years is that people are harder on themselves than God is. And friends, for some of you today, the best reason you can't forgive others is because you can't forgive yourself. And I get it. Nobody's harder on Greg Horn than Greg Horn. And I'm having to learn to just be a person more of uh, forgiveness for myself and extend grace and mercy at the same time. Just to acknowledge areas of my life that I need to surrender to God. I need to be more disciplined in to do better and improve and improve in. But God's not looking for perfection, friends. This side of heaven, we're not going to have perfection. So I want you to be encouraged today by that, that you can forgive quickly. But sometimes that starts with forgiving yourself. And last but not least, pray every day pray every day. You know, earlier this week, we started a series we're going to be doing over the next few years called After Amen, What to Do While You're Waiting on God. It's based off a book by Rusty George called After Amen that was written about three years ago. And uh, have Rusty on, Hope is Here, and just a couple of really, really good programs, had some really good feedback on it. And uh, I think so many times we get discouraged in our prayer life. And yet, friends, even when God doesn't answer our prayers immediately, he's still always working. And I uh, just want to remind you to pray, to pause. I love that pray acronym, P-R-A-Y, the word pray. Pause. Just be still and know these God. Letter R to reflect. Reflect where you're really at. Sometimes we can get fatigued and we can get emotionally charged about a situation. And when we sit back and reflect, we realize that, you know, maybe on a scale of one to 10, we think this is a 9.5, but maybe actually it's only a six or a five. Doesn't mean that it's not important, but it shouldn't just control every area of our lives and keep us from sleeping and cause us anxiety and stress. But remember, uh, prayer is just a good, it's, it's like any good conversation involves two things. One, talking, obviously, okay? 
<laughs> but you know what? It also involves listening. And I love that the Bible tells us that, you know, God listens to us. Isn't that so powerful to know that God, the very one that gave you and I breath today, that he wants to listen to you and he wants to listen to me. And man, that was just such a game changer for me when I realized that. And so thankful to know that God listens and that he cares. I mean, so maybe you just need to know that today, that God loves you and that he cares and he wants to help you, friends. He truly does. He is a way maker. He, he's a game changer. He always is looking to help and bless his sons and daughters. And I just never cease to be amazed how God does that, how he likes to do that, and how he wants to do it for you today. But the enemy will want to lie to you and just say, why are you praying? God doesn't care what's going on with you. Friends, I want to remind you that's not true. I love Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. It says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord of God Israel says. I love that. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. So friends, pause, reflect, ask, and then that yield. It's okay to ask for things. Ask God, and he'll answer, as we just talked about in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. But also yield. Sometimes what God wants us to do and ask us to do is maybe different than we thought that we were supposed to do. And I want to ask you right now, is there anything in your life that, you know, if you're honest, you really haven't yielded to? You've not yielded to, and you're kind of let that dominating uh, your thoughts, your life, and, and you know God's asking you to make a phone call. God's asking you to... Um, you know, maybe start giving at your church financially. Maybe it's to volunteer in children's ministry one time a week or help out a student ministry for a season of life. Uh, there's just so many things that sometimes, you know, they don't seem like big things, but they're just little nudgings. I call them nudgings that the Holy Spirit's put in our heart. Like, you know, you should do that. You should do that. And yet we just kind of keep pushing it to the side. And, you know, I just want to encourage you maybe to be obedient and to yield to that nudging today. I saw this great quote on social media. I don't remember who posted it, but just said, you'll never regret involving Jesus in every aspect of your life. You'll never regret involving Jesus in every aspect of your life. You know, friends, sometimes we, if we're honest, we kind of limit God in certain areas of our life because maybe uh, we've gotten hurt there before, or disappointed or burned. And yet, friends, I want to encourage you today to involve Jesus in every area of your life. Just don't have your, you know, out of your, your life, like maybe there's six boxes, you know, your, your fun, your family, your God, your church, okay, your finances, your physical activity, your working out box. And yet maybe there's this one area, you know, like, you know, I got this one TV show that I watch that, yeah, I know it's not really the best. It's kind of trashy, but, you know, God understands and, yeah, friends, I just want to encourage you that God's called us to be holy. Not perfect, but to be holy. And uh, sometimes maybe we need to evaluate uh, some of the reality TV shows or things that we watch and we fill our minds and hearts with. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but if you've been blessed by Food for Thought Friday, I hope you'll share it on social media or maybe just copy the link and text it to somebody and let them know that there's always hope because of Jesus. So I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.